Hi, everybody. Hello there. I'm Jerry. And I'm Linda. And this is Gizmo. We're the Village's Newcomers. And it's time for... Send us your questions. We've got your answers. Jerry and Linda's Mailbag Monday. Third week of February. 63 degrees this morning. Not bad. It was beautiful yesterday in the 80s. <laughs> now, this is the kind of weather that's on the postcard in the winter mm -hmm. when you come to Florida. You love it. I know. We all know. It's going to be hot in June and <laughs> July and August. It's going to be hot. <laughs> but right now, you've got to love it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, January, February are beautiful months, I think. I know January can be pretty cold, but February is, is awesome. <laughs> And we've got a full schedule of events this week. I mean, we schedule things out in advance to bring you adventures. Mm -hmm. Today, we're heading over to Bushnell. We're going to Bushnell Motorsports. They have a big layout with these amazing go-karts. We're going to drive. I have a need for speed. Taking a couple of friends. Can't wait for that. It'll be fun. You know, last week, if you watched, we painted some rocks. And you'll see we're going to be hiding those all around the community. I painted those rocks outside. Put a clear coat on them, pick them up on a big sheet of cardboard, <laughs> and I'm bringing them back in the house because look, like, oh, my rain. I fell down. He got a boom boom on his knee. I fell down and hurt myself. <laughs> I don't know how long he sat there before I, well, I didn't really find him. He what is a... up with this getting old and falling mm -mm. down? Mm -mm. I mean, you think you're picking your foot up that far. You're only picking it up about that far. Oh. I got to watch that. Well, we have been weakened, I mean, by this yeah. COVID, and we still, we're still a little bit feeble. This, this is 18, 19 days in, and we're still feeling the effects of it. So I, we feel for you all that have had it. And then I've heard people get it two times, and I'm going, no way. I come, coming in with those rocks, and, and I think, oh, clearly, clearly I've stepped high enough to get over that step. No. Mm. Boom, I'm falling down. Mm -hmm. I've got a little bleeding area on my knee. and. Mm. Then I realized I didn't feel any pain whatsoever. This COVID has taken away You're my, my sense, sense of feeling. Of feel. And uh, uh, so that's cool. Uh, I've been dizzy for two weeks. It's hard to walk. And uh, I played golf uh, this last Tuesday. And I was going, okay, I hope I can hit that ball without falling down and pick the ball up out of the hole. That was a chore. <laughs> and last week we had a letter, if you remember, uh, uh, it was about someone asking if they could live on just Social Security alone. They said they made 2500 bucks a week. This week, we had a reply to that, a beautiful reply, from somebody that does exactly that. So we'll, we'll get into that here in just a bit. And I got a comment that I wasn't too fond of. <laughs> the tea time system. That's a big one. People want to know, can we make tea times? Are there going to be enough tea times? We're going to tell you a little bit about that today. And we're going to see a wonderful painted driveway down south. I'll add more <laughs> today on Mailbag Monday. It's time for shout outs. We'll start with a very sad shout out. Hmm. One of our fellow YouTubers here in the villages, Melody Lane, Oh. Such a cheerful person. She was so happy to get in her golf cart and ride and bring you those rides. And she was also a, a home crafter. She was a stamper and a, a scrapbooker, and she had a huge following. And I'm sure there are thousands and thousands of people that are missing her. That It's, it's just incredibly sad. Well, she passed away this week, and uh, we send our best along to to her son and other folks that are going to be missing her terribly mm -hmm. because she was a, a great, great person. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to be sad. You know, it's always sad to know that these, these fine people are not going to be here anymore. I know, I know. She'll be greatly missed. Jeff and Maggie sent this picture of their pup, Mr. Sulu. Warp speed, Mr. Sulu. How you do that? Ooh. No, that's Mr. Spock. Oh, yeah. Oh. Or is it Robin Williams? Nanu, nanu. <laughs> and we were uh, kind of exposed to this Southwest Florida Eagle Camp. And I'll put the uh, picture there. You can see it. What a neat thing to go to and watch wild eagles as they fly around their natural habitat. That's so, so beautiful. 
Rob sent this picture of him and his bride. And Ashley sent these pictures of his pups from England. Yeah, Ashley lives in England. He's, he's had some trouble getting back and forth with all this COVID. And that's Chloe and Sydney. And Sydney's 13 years old. And uh, what a beautiful dog. I told him I love uh, German Shepherds. And that's an impressive looking dog, Ashley. One more letter I'll, I'll talk about. Dear Jerry and Linda, I have a suggestion on a topic for your blog. Could you do an educational video on how you make money on YouTube with the videos? If you could use some of your videos as examples and provide a breakdown of your ad revenue, what you pay YouTube and your net payment based on the number of views, blah, blah, blah. Just a suggestion. I think a lot of people be interested. That's from DB. I don't know why so many people are interested in what we make. It's not much. I'm going to tell you this. If you watch this video today and you watch the ads and you stay with it, if they count that as a valid view, we might get a penny, one penny. And then, of course, we will answer all your comments and, and we'll keep you posted up on Facebook and everything. So we're doing that for a penny or less of you. So don't think you're going to get rich on YouTube. And, you know, if, if that's the answer you were looking for, then go for it. You know, you can save up that money for quite a while. And then find out, oops, my, I dropped my phone. Or my picture's not clear anymore. I need to have my phone repaired. That could be $1,000. You know, that eats into that right away. We don't really do it for the money. The money, we, we probably could not have the channel without it. Because right now we're looking at three lights. We're looking at our camera right in the middle here. We have, we have microphones on. These are wireless microphones. It's all expensive. And uh, we do it because we want to help you and because it's fun. We don't do it to make extra money. But that extra money helps us stay going. So there you go, DB. Here we are hiding some rocks. That was a fun day. I think we have 18 in this batch, and we didn't hide them too hard. You'll find them. When you find them, you know, you could keep them if you want. They're not special. Believe me, they're very <laughs> amateurish. But you could keep them or you could rehide them. But if you would go to our Facebook page, The Villages Newcomers, Jerry and Linda, and on one of the posts there, pop in a picture of, uh, of you with that rock. That would be kind of cool. We'd appreciate that. But go look for them. Last week, we had the letter we mentioned asking if you could live on just Social Security in The Villages. There's a perception out there that everybody that lives here is rich, and that's not true. Teachers, not rich. No. Truck drivers, no. retired military. You have everything here. Now, there are some people that have saved their money and have a lot of money, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't say that's the norm. I'd say the norm are people like us. But Char wrote back to let us know her experience on $2,500. I'm gonna read it to you, it's a lot of reading. But I think if you follow along, you'll be amazed not only that she can get it done, it takes a special person to get that done. Growing up with our children, we didn't eat out. We ate at home 99% of the time, didn't we? We did a lot, yeah. And here, there are people that eat out every single night. But when you're on a fixed income like this, and by the way, some people wrote in about fixed income, none of you are on a fixed income. You all get that cost of living increase. We'll let that pass. <laughs> Char says, I'm living proof of someone living in the villages on $24.95 a month. I'm even carrying a mortgage, but oh. I brought what furniture would fit only having to buy a small dining room table that I got at a great thrift shop. So there she is. She's <laughs> buying her furniture at the thrift shop. You never know the difference. No, you're going to find great finds here at the thrift stores. <laughs> I'm making it work because... I need this lifestyle to actually live longer. Mm -hmm. So Char knows if she's here, she's, she's you know, playing bingo, she's walking <laughs> off the pounds, she's making friends and staying active, and that's what yes, it's all about. Yes. She goes on to say, I don't eat out very often, but I never did in Connecticut either. Here I only have Wi-Fi, a fire stick, no cable, and a $40 a month cell phone. No big expensive bundles. In Connecticut... 
Her cable bundle was $302 a month. Oh my gosh. Char is saving a bunch wow. right there. Wow, you go Char. <laughs> she says she did not receive a newspaper. Here, the newspaper for the entire year is about $86. Mm -hmm. And it has twice as much news, she says. Gasoline here is cheaper and fluctuates some weeks as much as 30 cents a gallon less in Florida. Connecticut has a personal property tax. Florida doesn't. Utilities here are less expensive. My heat slash cook gas was $285 a month and my electric averaged $255 a month in Connecticut. Insurance for both car and house here are less expensive, about one-fourth less of what it was in Connecticut. Mm. Connecticut has income tax, even on Social Security. Mm -hmm. The vets, Archie, that's her pup, just had to have all his shots, heartworm, etc. What just cost me $3.95 here in Florida would have cost me double in Connecticut. Oh my. I'm seeing savings everywhere in Florida except the grocery store. Yeah, three ninety five for your heartworm and your shots, that's pretty expensive. Yeah. She goes on to say, overall, I guess it just depends how extravagant a lifestyle you're currently living and what region you previously lived to determine if you can afford it down here. If you want something bad enough, often you can make it work. Charlene, that is a can-do attitude. We absolutely love that. Mm -hmm. It's great that everybody gets as much information as they can. I would hate for anybody to come here, work so hard, gut it out, and find, you know what, I just can't do it. Yeah. Thanks. So good luck to you, Char, and uh, good luck to everybody that wants to come down and give it a try. You just might make it work. Stop. I absolutely love this. <laughs> I love this so much. This is going to be my favorite part of the show today. And I, <laughs> Linda's going to read you a letter from a viewer. I'm not going to say his name, but it is a man. Jeff. <laughs> Jeff, I didn't want to say your name. Hi, guys. On a previous show, you showed a lot of your family photos. I did notice that Linda's hairstyle is the same today as it was back then. Although it looks fine, styles do change and would really like to see her change it to a more modern look. You took a leap to come to the villages. How about taking a leap and change the hairstyle? I got that in the email. I was so excited. <laughs> he sent it I to forwarded me. that to her so she could answer it. Like, that's what we do. I did. I answered it. She answered that and sent it back to me. <laughs> it was a two-word answer. Fantastic. I loved it. We did not send it. No. But Jeff... You got your answer. You, we just couldn't send it to you. <laughs> when I read that, it was unfolding in front of my eyes. I could see it. It reminded me of the time about 10 years ago or less when I dropped her off at the grocery store and she went in and, and I pulled it like I do and I watched the door and here she comes out. Oops, there's another car sort of like mine sitting right there by the door. A whole family in there. She walks right to that car, opens the door, gets in. It's ready to go, and she looks, and I look back. there's a whole bunch of strangers looking at her. <laughs> I kind of felt that way when this was unfolding, that this is going to be good. You know, like, give me the popcorn I was going to watch. So, so Jeff, anyway, come on, dude. <laughs> and we had a letter this week notifying us that the Bassmasters Elite Tour is right here. They have their weigh-ins uh, at 3.30 down on uh, Venetian. the Venetian Gardens, yeah. And it's part of the Harris chain of lakes. And I'm going to go down there tomorrow if I, if I can and watch a weigh-in at 3.30. That'll be the championship day. Uh, so if you're a fisherman and you want to see some big-time fishing, yeah. it comes here every once in a while. Joy and Chuck from Wisconsin write, After being here for six weeks, we're wondering why they have attendance at each of the gates to go to each village. Residents can go through with their pass cards and guests can push the red buttons to get through. A lot of that's done for traffic. Coming off of Buena Vista, right. coming off of Morse Boulevard, you get these roundabouts and then they'll cruise right into the neighborhood. They don't want that to back up into the main drag. So these gate attendants are there and they have the power to raise it up and, yeah. and you know, to Scoot through. roll people through. Mm -hmm. But if you noticed, let's take Hillsborough Trail, for example. 
It's a long road. It connects Buena Vista and Morse Boulevard. Mm -hmm. There is only a gate attendant on one end of that. The other end does, doesn't have one. Take Pinellas, another example, just the same. On one end, there's a gate attendant. On the other end, no gate attendant. So there is not a gate attendant at every, but at a lot of the major intersection, you're going to have a person that's actually there to keep the traffic flowing and try to eliminate any kind of a golf cart automobile mishap. Right. Linda and Jeff are proud to announce that they're new villagers. They took the plunge and bought a new house in Hawkins. They saw it listed 10 days ago and they close on March 9th. Things move very fast. Here they are with a little message for us. Hello there, I'm Linda. Hey, I'm Jeff. And, and we're, we're the newcomers, newcomers to, to the, the villages. villages. Jerry and Linda, we love watching your videos and we can't wait to get there. Coming to you this Super Bowl Sunday from Michigan. Look what we're putting up with. See you when we get there. See ya. Welcome to you both. We're so glad you're here and we hope you love it as much as we do. This is from Jim in Michigan. He loves our channel and he has, uh, he asks us, are there many single people that live in the villages? And Jeff, that is a yes. There are lots of single people. Mm -hmm. We've done a show or two featuring singles. We have another one coming. There are lots of single people here and they seem to be enjoying themselves just fine. Mm -hmm. We see them at bonfires, at the rec centers, and, you know, they have leagues where you could play water volleyball with singles, or you could play pickleball with singles, or, or whatever. But we think that uh, there are plenty of them. We're going to have a show coming up real soon where singles address that. We think it's a good place for singles. But we don't really, we're not out there in it, but we'll try to bring you more of that just to let you know. Shelly asks, are you allowed to have a pool in the villages? Uh, Shelly, have you not been watching? <laughs> there are 104 pools that we can go to. Yeah, there's pools everywhere. And are you allowed to have an electric fence for your dogs, uh, underground fence for your dogs? And that is a yes. We do have some in our neighborhood. I've seen a couple uh, yards that have that. I saw a sad story yesterday where a lady's poodle got loose and was hit by a delivery driver oh. and killed. Oh, oh. Electric fence may have helped with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the thing about an invisible fence, your dog will have a collar that trains him to stay in your yard. All the other dogs out there are not trained to stay out of your yard. Yeah, They, they can. can come in. So if you leave your dog out there unattended, other dogs can come right in. Yeah. And, it, and that could happen easily. Mm -hmm. that, would be, that would be tragic. I've, I've always said those invisible fences, they work best on invisible dogs. <laughs> this is from Deborah. She thinks there's a debate about pools, uh, whether the pools are salt water or chlorine. Most of the pools in the, um, the rec centers are salt water pools. They don't use chlorine. And I don't know why. <laughs> well, it must be cheaper. Cheaper. Might be better. Mm -hmm. May not uh, bleach out your bathing suit. <laughs> it's a tough thing to get an answer to a question like that because the people that you get a hold of to answer these questions will tell you what they think so this is just what we think we think they're mostly salt water mm -hmm. in fact we don't know if there are any chlorine pools but there might be we'll try to research that a little bit better kirk says here's a question should we run our sprinklers on a 20 minute cycle twice a week or a shorter time period more times a week your sprinklers are always going to be based upon the weather. Right now, the average temperature is probably 70 degrees, mm -hmm. 65 degrees. Right. You don't need as much water. It's not as, as relenting, less hot, you know. So we're running two times a week, about 20 minutes per zone. We run on Tuesday mornings and Saturday mornings. Mm -hmm. When summer comes, we're going to have to go to three times a week. And your water bill will go up 33%. But 20 minutes could get it. You need to check those sprinklers very often mm -hmm. to make sure they're hitting the entire yard. Your yard will tell you. When you go out there, if it's not hitting, you'll see yeah. a brown area. Yeah. And then you do a test run, adjust your sprinkler, try to get it saturated. But twice a week is good for the winter, probably not good enough for the summer. 
We were driving through the neighborhood yesterday and we stopped to ask a person whose yard looks extremely good. It's beautiful. Every time I walk Gizmo, I go, why is his yard so pretty? He's a snowbird <laughs> and he's not here a lot. In fact, he's already gone again. Yes, he is. But he waters three times a week, even in the winter. So he's putting 33% more water on there than most people. Yeah. And that's why his grass looks so good. And that's why his water bill is so high. high. Yeah. Jamie asked a question. Uh, she said, I watched today's show and was thinking, how did your youngest son feel not being able to go home anymore where his school friends were? Oh. Well, first of all, it's a little misleading. He graduated from high school. Then he went a thousand miles away to college for four years. Yeah. After he got out of college, he went directly to the Air Force. While he's gone to the Air Force, then we sold our home. So he had technically been gone from home for over five years right. when we did that. Now, he came back and visited once in a while. Yeah, I mean, it had to be a, a rude awakening that, mm -hmm. bang, a, a realization that I can't go back there anymore. But believe me, he loves where we are, and he's, he's been down here a lot. Mm -hmm. Kathy and Scott would like to put a hot tub in the yard. Our question is, when purchasing, do you need to buy a villa with room for a pool slash spa, or can a spa be put in a smaller villa fenced in yard? Basically, you're gonna get approval for the electric if you have a, a special situation. But if you have a patio that's legal and you have proper electricity, you can get approval for a hot tub or a spa in your yard, whether there is a fence or not. You know, I think you can have it right on your back patio if you like, but the ARC, Architectural Review Committee or the Deed Compliance Office will tell you. But yes, you can have a hot tub if you have a legal place to put that hot tub. And I would also suggest having a bird cage around it <laughs> for the mosquitoes. Well, what you do if you go out there, you get down like this far <laughs> in the water. And they're buzzing around your ears. <laughs> and you go like this. Penny wonders if we have any public transportation inside the villages, if you don't or can't drive. Well, there are uh, Ubers, there are Lyfts, uh, and of course you can get taxis. So as far as a van or a shuttle, you can pay uh, the shuttle, the village shuttle, to take you to the airport. So there is public transportation available. Mm. I, don't, I don't really go with that. You don't? No. Those private companies that take you to and from the airport, they're just cars for hire. She's, I think they're talking about, can, does something come by that's going to take you to the grocery and bring you oh. back home? And I'd, Uber can do it. Lyft can do it. They're grossly expensive, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. I Googled some, and to go from here to Sumter Landing was 30 bucks. Yeah. So that, that probably varies by time and whatnot, but that's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Hey, I want to go get some uh, bread and milk, and uh, then you pay 30 bucks each way. So no, no free. Nothing free. And when the trolleys start running again, which is great, we can't wait for that. Cannot it's wait, be nice. cannot wait. They are not drop off, drop on. You know, no. you ride a big it's, circuit and come back tour. to where you, it's a tour. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's not going to be a let you off and mm -hmm. it'd be nice if it was. Wouldn't that be awesome? Yeah. <laughs> Penny also asks if grocery stores deliver. They do. We use Walmart Marketplace a lot. Uh, we've resisted the urge to use Publix delivery. Um, when Dixie, we've actually seen the Kroger van through the villages, and and they don't have a storefront, a typical store. They have a warehouse, and but you have to call some kind of wait, one eight hundred number, or whatever, to set it, set your grocery up list up. But uh, I've seen that in the villages also. We've bought a ham the last three times we've had groceries <laughs> delivered. Tried, <laughs> and every time it gets here, they say, "Sorry, we don't have a ham." Don't have a ham. Didn't have any left. No ham. No, no. ham for you. Or they'll tell you, "I'm sorry, we didn't have the." Butter crust bread, we substituted uh, oatmeal bread. You know, so you gotta take substitutions mm -hmm. or you have to stipulate you don't want any substitutions, then you get nothing. Yeah. Rick and Bonnie wonder about tea times. How far in advance can you make a tea time on both the executive courses and the championship courses? And can you make multiple tea times in advance? The answer to those things are yes, you can make multiple tea times. I could file a request about a week ahead, through the tea time system, you can see a slide right here. And I will get into that and request a tea time for myself and my buddies, or Linda will do it for her gal friends, and 
they will go through the TTEMP system and four days ahead, the computer will select and punch in your reservation. Mm -hmm. Now I could do a reservation for Monday. I could do one for Tuesday. I could do one for Wednesday. I could do one for Thursday. You can do that every day. You could, so you can have multiple tea times, but not on the same day. Mm, yeah. They will keep track of how many times you're playing golf. And they use that as a gauge as to who gets selected. If I had played five times this week and she had played zero, she would get preference over me. And that's the way it works. It's on a point system. Mm -hmm. And if you sign up for a tea time and you don't go, you get, you get three penalty points. Mm -hmm. And those add up and you will now probably get your next, your next, re your next request. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Paul continues on that line of thought. With the villages ever expanding, is it harder to get a tea time to the point of frustration? Paul, I would not say it's, it's frustrating if you do it a week ahead because the computer plays no favorites. You know, it will select you out of the mass. And if your point totals in your group, you have four golfers, say you averaged, you've played twice this week, you probably get your tee time. If you'd all played six times already this week, you may not. But no, it's not frustrating if you try it in advance. What's frustrating is if you wanted to play tomorrow and you had a, four a foursome of golfers, it'd be very difficult to find a place where you could play all four of you together. Yeah. He also asks, has the allure of free golf worn thin? To get a tee time, do you have to play the game in order to play the game? I see what you did there, Paul. I like the free golf. I've played plenty of golf, I'm, uh, if you want to call it play golf. <laughs> He's a good golfer. It, takes, it can take four to five hours to play a round of golf. But if you go play the free golf, you get a round in 90 minutes. Yeah. Is it challenging? Of course it's challenging. <laughs> it's difficult. I love it. <laughs> And they, they crank those rounds through there so well, so many people can play golf. So mm -hmm. no, the allure of free golf is not worn thin. I do know some people here in the neighborhood that, you know, would probably tend to look down their nose at the free golfers because they like to play championship golf. Right now, the, the rates for a non-priority member can, could be over $64. You know, that's a lot of money to play golf when I could play free. So Mark and Shoko live in Korea. It's always fun, isn't it? Yes. Well, hi to you guys way over there. They're asking, are golf carts allowed on the fairways at all the courses or is there a cart path only rule? Oh. That's a good question. Mm -hmm. The championship courses allow golf carts on the fairways. But very often on a par three, there will be a sign that says, keep your cart on the path. So on a championship course, you can, if you're like me and you hit your ball on the right side, way <laughs> over there, you can drive your cart over to your ball. Mm -hmm. If you're on a par three and you hit your ball way over there, you park on the cart path and walk over. Walk, yeah. If you're on an executive course, there are a couple of par fours yeah. every once in a while. Not all the executives, but... Maybe half of them have one or two par fours. You can drive in the fairway on the par fours, mm -hmm. but you cannot drive on the fairways on a par three. Yeah. Nancy has another golf cart question. She wonders, we checked into designing our own golf cart. Are there any used golf cart places? This is golf <laughs> cart <laughs> mecca yeah. right here. There are lots of places to get golf carts. Right now, the supply is down. Demand is up, supply is down. Mm -hmm. yeah. You'd have more trouble. But you can find plenty of places to buy a used golf cart right now at a premium price. And George. George says, in the villages, golf carts are a big thing. Can you customize golf carts, not just on the outside, but on the inside? Like make them louder and faster, kind of like a hot rod? <laughs> Oh. Georgia, you, you can tinker around all you want and do all kinds of things. But if you make them more than 20 miles an hour, they have to be street legal, and then you'd have to have them licensed and insured. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you make them too loud, your you're, neighbors aren't going to like they're, that. They're not going to like it. You're going to get dirty looks. <laughs> but, I mean, there are Harley-Davidsons on our very street. You know, we can hear that. Blah, 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 that blah, that's blah, blah. true. 
You know, so it can be done, but don't, don't be that guy. <laughs> this is from Jean and Lisa. How long is a painted driveway expected to last and what maintenance is required? And Jerry, talk to someone about that. Well, we have a painted driveway, mm -hmm. and we like the fellow that painted our driveway. Uh, it was painted more than six years ago, and it still looks beautiful. Gorgeous. I call them the secret to keeping it look beautiful is to keep it sealed. Every three to four years, you put a good coat of sealer on the driveway, mm -hmm. and that protects the paint underneath. And uh, it's been sealed one time since it was put down. Mm. We're going to do it again here within the year, probably, just to protect that paint underneath. All right, so you start with a concrete driveway. It's peer pressure a lot of times. Yeah. If your neighbor has a concrete driveway, no design, you don't feel the urge. But when your neighbor gets his painted, then it looks so good yeah. compared to yours. And you may want to have it painted. So we did a little research. How much does a painted driveway cost? Well, painted driveways are basically the same here in the villages. You have either a two-car garage in most designer homes or a two-and-a-half. We're going to go with two-and-a-half because that's what we have. $1,800 to $2,200 for a nice paint job. In fact, the one we talked about was guaranteed 10 years. Hmm. And then at the end of 10 years, it would be resealed and you'd be good to go for another 10 years. So $2,200 would be a worst case scenario. When you do have it resealed, it costs about $1.89 a square foot to have it resealed. And you've got a beautiful driveway. We love it when people park in our driveway. You never know who's gonna park there, by the way. Your plumber, your electrician, your handyman, your son. <laughs> they're gonna dribble oil on that driveway. Yeah. We had it happen twice recently. We have three guests, but most of the service people park out front. They don't use your driveways. They, they I do. think they're told not to. <laughs> I was getting at the point that after our guests left, yeah. there was a big pool of oil in the driveway. Yeah. And it wiped right wiped up. Wiped right up. Yeah. And where the technicians and service people park out in the street on the black asphalt. You will see spots. <laughs> you can see it. <laughs> this question is from Patty. Is there an RV park for seasonal rental in the villages? You have never mentioned it in any of your shows. Can you do a drive-through for your viewers? Well, we have done Patty, have you watched all of our shows? <laughs> we have mentioned it. We've mentioned it, Patty. Yeah. There are lots of RV parks around uh, for seasonal meals, too. And <clears throat> a lot of the parks will give you just some a, a short visit. So for RV, you can go for what I call Lake Griffin, and it's highly rated. And they said you can only rent for two weeks for 14 days, and then you have to leave for three days and then come back or go to another state park, and then you can come back. There, uh, That's just a, what a lot of them do, or probably most of them do. So <clears throat> you can go. They are uh, the, Probably the cost is about uh, almost $30 a day. And uh, so there's many of them. I mean, I, I saw 12 just around here. <laughs> the uh, one at Lake Griffin, I believe, <clears throat> that might be the one that was hit by that tornado in 07. Mm -hmm. And uh, eight people lost their lives in, a, oh, in either that, mobile homes or RVs yeah. Yeah. Uh, at that time. Well, yeah. But there are places, and, and we're going to do a tour of some. Mm -hmm and show you what they look like. Mm -hmm. It looks like a fun lifestyle. Yeah, it is. It looks lovely, uh, especially the state parks, because you have so much more to do there. You have trails to walk. You have places you can canoe and kayak. and uh, You want to do play, that? Playgrounds and stuff. You, are I mean, you wanting to canoe and kayak? I, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> but, yeah, I would probably go to the state park. Patty, you can do it. We'll try to bring you more in the future. Oh, you've been good. He's been patient. He's been waiting. He's not whined one time today. No. I had a little talk with him. You ready to do your bit? Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> there are lots of artists here in the villages. Mom and Dad love art. In fact, did you guys see that statue that somebody made of me? Oh my goodness, it was so good. But I told him you gotta be careful with artists. Cause they're kinda sketchy. 
They're shady. And sometimes they'll try to frame you. I almost got a job with a company that makes bicycle wheels. I was going to be the spokesperson. <laughs> spokesperson. But really, when I found out that my toaster was not waterproof, I was shocked. Good stuff, buddy. Good stuff, always. Bam Bag Monday. We hope you enjoyed our show. We always enjoy bringing it to you. If you liked our video today, please press that like, subscribe, and please share. Until next time. See you when you get here.